Good evening to you all. It's my privilege to uh, welcome you to our regular uh, town council meeting for September, or at least for the second meeting in September. We're pleased that you all could join us tonight. And uh, thank you for complying with our request to, to wear a mask. And uh, by your seating <coughs> arrangements, I believe everybody's physically distanced for sure. So uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to recognize uh, Mayor Pro Tem Beringer, who will lead us in our pledge, and also uh, she will have our invocation. Ms. Beringer. Thank you for joining me. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment. Father God, we come, we come before you humbly tonight and ask for your wisdom as we make decisions, uh, as, we, as we go about our, our lives, but most importantly this evening, right now, that we make the best decisions possible for our town. And Lord, we ask for, for you to calm the unrest in our, our land, to protect our citizens and to bring peace and justice uh, in the climate that we're living in. We pray for our frontline workers, our police, our, our firefighters, our doctors and nurses, all those people that uh, put their life on the line every day to take care of their fellow citizens. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Beringer. Um, mm -hmm. The first part of our meeting this evening will be uh, an opportunity for you, if you're here, to make petitions or comments, we usually ask you, if you will, to sign up with the, uh, with the town clerk. Um, but let me just give you a, a little instruction in regards to this. The por this portion of the meeting is to receive comments from the public on items not included on the agenda. As I mentioned, we ask you to sign up with the town clerk if you will do that. The board, this council, is interested in hearing your concerns but may not take action or deliberate on subject matter brought up during the petitions and comments sec segment. Topics uh, requiring further investigation will be referred to the appropriate town officials or staff and may be scheduled for a future agenda. Uh, and this evening, after we finish um, the initial part, there's, a, there's an add-on to that that I want to do this evening in recognition of a special person. But having said that, uh, Ms. Clerk, did you have any persons who signed up with you? No, sir, we did not. Okay. So at this point, I will open it up. If there are members of the audience who came this evening desiring to uh, make any petitions or comments, if you'll raise your hand, I'll recognize you and ask you to come to the podium. Okay. So you're seeing or hearing none. Um, then I'd like to uh, take a few minutes <clears throat> for this council, primarily if there's somebody else who would like to do this. Uh, most of you probably know by now that <clears throat> our former mayor, Ronnie Williams, uh, passed away on Saturday of last week. Uh, due to COVID uh, circumstances, the uh, sort of normal processes of a, of a burial and, uh, and a service uh, was, uh, was, was passed over. Uh, you'll be hearing something probably in the future about some things that uh, that the town will do in con concert with the with the family. But I thought it'd be only mo most appropriate this evening for me to uh, give council members an opportunity to make any comments, observations. Uh, many of these council members work directly with former Mayor Ronnie Williams as I did, and so uh, I'll have a privilege at the end of, of, of making a few observations. But at this time. Uh, I'm going to recognize uh, any council members who would like to do that, and we don't have to go in any particular sequence, but uh, I guess maybe just for orderly purposes, I can start down at this end. If you want to say something, that'll be fine. Keep your comments in a reasonable time frame. Yes, I'm sure you will. Yes, sir. I would just say that uh, I, it was uh, a pleasure to work with uh, the former mayor, who everyone I know uh, knew that he loved the town and uh, he was a 
a great ambassador uh, for the town, and I, got, I had the distinct privilege to be one of the last people he swore into office. Uh, so I just want to say that uh, his service is appreciated, and and he epitomized, I believe, uh, a, a citizen of Garner, a love for Garner, a defender of Garner. Uh, there was no doubt. I will never forget when he threw the stone uh, for the red route uh, hmm. to say that he was David coming up against the Goliath of the Department of Transportation. Uh, and he stood his ground there and stood it well. And his service uh, is, is appreciated and his spirit is appreciated and his esprit de corps is, is appreciated. I'm sure it will live on. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Um, Dellinger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to work with um, Mayor uh, Williams, but even up to s several years ago in meeting him, he had encouraged me to get more involved, and I didn't take him up on it when he told me to, but I did a little bit later um, and started coming to council meetings, and he was always very encouraging of participation and service. Um, and I think everyone knows no one loved Garner more than he did. Um, so it's, it's a honor to be sitting up here in sort of his, his footsteps um, for all his years of service. Thank you. <clears throat> Sparinger. Yes. Um, I was able to go to Mayor Williams' uh, visitation and there was a, a video of things, years past pictures, and some of them when he was very young, when he was in the military. And uh, I did recognize him, but uh, that was interesting to see. And then it, it just occurred to me that his whole life was serving in one way or another. Um, he served in Vietnam. Uh, when he came home, he went to work as a letter carrier. And back then, that was called having a, a job in civil service. And then eventually he became involved in service for the town of Garner. So um, that was what, where Ronnie was happiest, is when he was serving someone else. And uh, he will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Singleton. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, served with Mayor Williams on this first board of aldermen, now the town council, for 26 years. And uh, uh, I knew him before then, but, of course, we worked together on many things over the years. A lot of people don't realize that when Ronnie was first elected back in 1985, the town had decided to go, before that, they had, everybody had two-year terms on the council, or the alderman, also, also the mayor. And they decided that year to stagger terms, and two people would be four-year terms starting in 85, one of them which was, was Mayor Williams, along with former mayor and alderman Don Rubal. Uh So he was one of the first two people on a four-year term for the council. And then in 2007, 2005, I asked the council to put a resolution on the ballot for people to let the mayor have a four-year term. I thought it was kind of odd that the council had a, a four-year term and the mayor didn't. It passed big, and it would start in 2007. So when he got reelected in 2007, he started serving the first four-year term as mayor. So he served the first four-year term as a, as a council member and also as mayor. And he served 34 consecutive years, which nobody else has served that many consecutive years for Garner. Mr. John served about 35 years. So if you think about it, in the last 18, 19 months, we lost 69 years of service on here on this council from two people, two men who served on here for that many years. If, if you knew Mayor Williams, he loved Garner, he loved Friday night football games. I mean, he'd see the Friday night football game, he'd say, come over here, guys, talk to me. He'd talk. Then he'd go, I said, go work the crowd, go work the crowd. He said, got to do it. You know how Ronnie was, got to do it. He would talk. If he knew you, he would stop and talk to you at a football game. He didn't see much football game as much as he did talking. He loved Christmas parade. He loved the event before Christmas parade. He loved Fireman's Day and the Fireman's Day parade. Uh, he was a veteran. And he loved July 3rd. It meant a lot to him as the, the Veterans Day event the town has and the Memorial Day event. He really enjoyed those quite a bit, having served as Mr. Matthews and Mr. Vance have also served. So uh, he really enjoyed those quite a bit. And of course, if y'all knew about the Groundhog Day event, there aren't many people in Garner I know that enjoyed putting on a top hat and tails and having a groundhog whisper in his ear, but he sure got a mm -hmm. kick out of the Groundhog Day event, as, mm -hmm. as the kids did. Um, let's see, got some else on here too, I was gonna mention. He enjoyed and was proud to cut the to be here when we had the groundbreaking at town hall and also to cut the ribbon for the new town hall. Also for the uh, opening of the police station, he was proud of that. Uh, it's a shame that he and both he and Mr. Johns aren't going to be here one day when the rec center gets opened. Uh, there'll be a plaque in there with their names recognizing them 
for being on the council when that was approved. So uh, if, you, if you knew the mayor, he, lo he loved Garner. He loved having a, having a good time and a good laugh. And one last thing, it, it, he served with the rescue squad and also the fire department. One of his good friends who he also worked with with the postal service, Richard Gully. If any of you knew who Richard Gully was, he was a piece of work. Hmm. And he and Ronnie were really good friends, and he passed away last November. I told Richard son Tony that there's no doubt that they're out there in heaven slapping each other on the back and telling a story and telling a tale and making people laugh. Whether the story's true or not, it might be, you know, you never know. <laughs> but they enjoyed getting together and having fun. And uh, I'm sure that's what he's doing now. So he served, as I say, 34 years with the town, uh, the, the town uh, council and his mayor. And uh, did a really good job while he did that, and he loved it. I mean, he loved going to the elementary school and reading books to kids. He really did. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had the uh, honor of serving as an alderman for eight years with Ronnie. And uh, that's like Grace said, every time we've been out in public, he said, you need to get out there and work the crowd. Got to work the crowd. Let them know who you are. And uh, Ronnie and I... Uh, Shared a couple of things together. Both of us were Vietnam veterans. Both of us had the pleasure of being on the fire department, and uh, uh, but um, he was he was truly well liked. And there was that that class I was in. It was myself, Jackie Johns, Janice Stevenson, and Ronnie. And I found a black and white picture of when we opened fire station number three, and the four of us were over there. And I made copies, and I carried one to Ronnie. Uh, uh, this was a few months ago, and we sat down and had a great time talking and reminiscing. I cured one to Jackie's son, and he was very pleased, and I cured one to Janice's daughter. And I got one on my mantle at home. So uh, as I was looking at it uh, over the weekend, I was thinking, well, I'm the last one left in that picture, so uh, we'll see how all that turns out. But uh, Jackie called us the dream team, and I'll never forget that. And uh, But Ronnie's going to be missed. He did a lot for this town. He loved this town. and. He didn't go nowhere that he didn't know somebody. So, uh, Ronnie, I know you're up there, and brother, you're going to be missed, and we'll all be together one day soon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, council members. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, take the privilege of uh, uh, noting a few things that I uh, jotted down as I was thinking about Ronnie. Uh, if Ronnie had a motto, I'd say his motto was service. Service meant a lot to him, and uh, <clears throat> he certainly gave a lot of service to this town. I, uh, <clears throat> I came across a quote uh, which is attributed to uh, Henry Ford, and he says, <clears throat> you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Um, Ronnie did not talk so much about what he was going to do. He just, he just got out and he did it, and he did it for all those years, for over 30 years, he served as a public elected official in this town, a town that he loved and he bragged on often. Uh, Mr. Vance alluded to this, but uh, I think of the many causes he was involved with that I remember or knew about. One that stands out in my mind was the, uh, was the I-540, the Red Route. And I remember going with him to several meetings and he would always stand up and when he had an opportunity and speak of the red route uh, and, and to him it was like the plague I think it was such a bad thing and so uh, through his influence and the influence of others the red route was eliminated from consideration as evidenced by where it is being built today Ronnie's many years of service will be uh, will be remembered as a as a standard that few if any will match his passion for this town is something we could all strive to emulate. And so it is passing we honor him and recognize both his leadership and his service. I believe these words spoken by Theodore Roosevelt in many ways capture the essence of Ronnie's life. Mr. Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have where you are. And I believe that's what Ronnie did. He did it for the town of Garner. May he, uh, may he rest in peace. If you will, uh, join me at this time for a brief moment of, uh, of silence and uh, you reflect on the life of Ronnie Williams and give thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, and um, 
as we uh, make other plans, perhaps at a future date, there may be some other public uh, recognitions, but we're, uh, we'll work with the, uh, with the, with the uh, family in regards to that. So we'll go back to our regular agenda now, and um, Madam Clerk, I guess I didn't ask you to call the roll, did I? I'm happy to do that now. Would you do that, please, ma'am? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Marshburn. I'm oh, present. Sorry, Mayor Marshburn. Present, yes. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Berenger. Here. Councilmember Dellinger. Here. Councilmember Matthews. Here. Councilmember Singleton. Here. And Councilmember Vance. Here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Council, the next item of business is the adoption of the agenda. You all have that uh, before you there, either in hard copy or on your computer. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, moved properly and seconded. Uh, any questions, comments, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting the agenda, please say aye. 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 If there's any opposition, no, and of course there is none. So thank you very much. Um, our first item of business is under the heading of presentations, and I'm going to recognize Assistant Town Manager John Hodges, who will recognize some other folks, I believe. Thank you, John. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Joe Stallings, our economic development director, could not be here tonight. So it's my privilege to introduce Mr. Jeff Swain. He is the chairperson for the Garner Economic Development Corporation. They're one of the nonprofit organizations that is our partners in facilitating our economic development efforts for the town. So I'll recognize Mr. Swain for a special presentation. Thank you. Mr. Swain. Thank you, John, and uh, good evening, Mayor Marshburn, town council members. It's uh, good to be with you. And uh, it is my uh, pleasure to represent the uh, Board of Directors this evening of the Garner Economic Development Corporation to recognize uh, two individuals who have made uh, significant contributions uh, to the Economic Development Corporation. And uh, first, and I guess uh, John is helping out here, first I'd like to uh, uh, recognize uh, Ronnie Thompson. Ronnie, uh, you want to come up and join us and, and actually uh, Ronnie doesn't need much introduction to folks he's a business leader in Garner and an owner of TT&E and uh, Ronnie and I actually got involved with GEDC activities back almost at the beginning uh, on the advisory board and then uh, we both uh, joined the, uh, the the executive board here a short while ago a couple of years ago uh, but during the time of Ronnie's involvement, um, his expertise and his knowledge from his own business and business in general uh, made major contributions uh, along the way, working obviously when we started with the ConAgra site, with the buildings, and then moving all the way forward to the transition uh, when, when Ronnie joined the board and became treasurer of GEDC. So his uh, contributions were invaluable to us, and thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Hmm. Thank you. Do you have a speech? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, I, I do want to say it's been an honor, a privilege uh, working on the GEDC board. Um, it's been a long road, and I've met a lot of great people, um, and I just uh, enjoyed everything I did on the board. So thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. And uh, second, uh, Mayor Marshburn. Uh, before being mayor, you served as the town council representative, I believe, on the uh, GEDC board at its inception, which uh, was about 10 years ago, I think. And uh, during, those, during those years, you and others uh, steered the corporation to the point where uh, the celebrations were held with the uh, sale of the property to, uh, to Verizon. And, uh, and subsequent to that, you, uh, when, when Bruce Andrews left us, you assumed the role as chair of the board and helped to steer us through the transition period from the, from the sale of Amazon, which was really the focal point for GEDC, to where uh, we developed a work plan for the future, which I believe has been presented uh, before the council at this point. And so 10 long years of service to GEDC and making very significant contributions along the way. And we thank you greatly. I'll come to you, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Oh, 
Um, thank, thank you, um, <clears throat> Mr. Swain. Yep. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the uh, for the position that you hold now. I was going to tell you that uh, you have big shoes to fill, but I only wear a size seven and a half, so <laughs> the shoes won't be too big. Um, I'd be. Re oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let uh, just a couple more comments. I I'd be remiss if I didn't. Uh, Recognize also in a gentleman who is still serving on the GDC board, and that's uh, uh, Council Member Elmo Vance, who was part of the original group, myself and him and Bruce Andrews, who couldn't be with us this evening. But um, that was that was that was quite a quite an interesting experience. Uh, it was a process that we served. I served over nine years, and our main focus was on marketing the uh, the old ConAgra plan after the terrible explosion occurred out there. And I've often felt like that. Um, uh, from that tragedy came triumph uh, over time. It took a long time, but uh, there was a lot of perseverance uh, exhibited by the original board and certainly by the board of directors. And, and so the board that is now functioning uh, sort of has a new task. They, they have a new uh, kind of a work plan and they're gonna be doing some, some things that this council will be hearing about. So their focus has changed, uh, but they're still very much a viable part of, uh, of our town. And so, uh, uh, thank you very much for the recognition. I appreciate that. Did you say we needed to take maybe one picture, John? Okay. If, if folks will indulge with us, uh, let's do that, Ron. Maybe. Under the circumstances, I probably. <laughs> 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 so you were smiling, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, next item of business uh, is the consent agenda. Uh, council, do I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Move. Okay, moved and seconded second. by Ms. Uh, Beringer. Mm -hmm. uh, moved by Mr. Vance. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor of co approving the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. Is there any opposition? And there is none. So, um, I guess you already voted, didn't you? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so approved. Okay, um, we have one public hearing this evening and then we have uh, an item of new and old business. So um, in just a few minutes, I will recognize uh, Mr. Treasonberg and others uh, to be sworn who expect to give testimony. But let me, uh, let me just give you a little introductory uh, overview in terms of what we're about to do. Um, <clears throat> this is a quasi-judicial hearing, which means it's more formal than uh, regular public hearings. Under, uh, under state law, the parties are entitled to a fair hearing, and so I will now inquire of the council whether any member has a fixed opinion prior to this hearing that is not subject to change or any, in particular, ex parte communications or any close familial business or other associational relationships with an affected person or a financial interest in the outcome. If such is the case, uh, would you acknowledge it now? Okay, hearing none, very good, thank you. So this is a fact-finding hearing and appropriate sworn evidence must be presented as a basis for whatever decision the town council makes. Opinion testimony is not appropriate factual evidence unless the witness is a recognized expert on the subject. Therefore, opinion testimony concerning such things as impacts on land values, tra traffic safety, or noise levels should be avoided unless the witness is a recognized expert based on training and experience. 
Uh, you're permitted to ask questions of other speakers concerning the factual testimony. Council members are only allowed to receive factual information about the cases in the hearing and are not allowed to discuss the cases outside of the hearing. Please respect uh, the time of all and try to keep your uh, comments uh, within reasonable time. We usually uh, ask that you do this so within three to five minutes. So at this time, if you expect to give testimony in this hearing, if you would see the town clerk back in this corner and let her swear you in, then we will begin the hearing. Okay, I'm going to recognize our uh, planning director, Mr. Jeff Treasenberg, who will be our initial presenter. Thank you, Mr. Treasenberg. Yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Mayors, uh, members of the council. Uh, normally, David and Stacy would be here. It's not that I ran them off or anything, <laughs> good. Um, but they did have uh, familial engagements for tonight, so I am covering in their absence. Uh, but this is a project that um, most of you will be familiar with um, as a version of it came before you approximately a year ago and the applicant came to you also for a waiver of the one-year waiting period um, as noted it has been about a year since the the previous one anyhow um, but tonight this comes back to you and i'm going to try not to belabor uh, some of the common stuff, although I will go through it um, just for those who haven't seen it before and focus primarily on what is different about this request versus the one you saw before. Um, so this is Kennedy Ridge. Uh, the applicant is still Dan Ryan Builders. The owners are uh, John Bosch Jr. Revocable Trust and Charles and Yolanda Chappelle. Uh, the location is on Creech Road, uh, just north of the church and funeral home. And the entire tract uh, is 16.4 plus or minus acres. When we looked at uh, zoning for the property, here's just a general site uh, map with the current, uh, well, recent, I should say, aerial photography. Uh, the funeral home is located here. Uh, the church a little further to the south. You have Creech Road Elementary School. Uh, across the way and slightly to the south, School Acres Subdivision and North Garner Middle uh, to the west. Uh, here's the site from Google Street View uh, showing the Creech Road there as a two lane cross section. Uh, here is the current zoning right now. The property is zoned R40. Um, we do use that primarily in planning circles as a a holding zone, as normally this would be reserved for well and septic uh, type development. As you know, typically in the town, we do not promote a well and septic subdivision. That's usually reserved for the county. Um, to the north, you have existing R9 zoning. Uh, on this parcel right here, which is bounded kind of as follows. That uh, is the Ashton Forest subdivision that was approved just over two years ago uh, by the Planning Commission since the zoning was already in place. Uh, that went to them for final approval. I did check with engineering uh, before the meeting. Uh, that subdivision has been inching forward. They did receive their construction drawing approvals uh, this past May. Um, to our understanding though, I believe that the applicant that appeared before us is uh, attempting to see if there is a buyer who is willing to actually build it. Um, to the south and west in School Acres, we have R12 zoning. Um, again, those homes are going to be on um, city water and sewer. Um, across the street, you have R40. Again, those homes are on well and septic. Not a whole lot of zoning uh, changes in this part of town over time. Um, there's been about five cases there. Most recently, you see the one that was denied for this project. Um, I don't want to say this project, but the similar project predecessor 
uh, on August 5th, 2019. Again, the existing zoning is R40. Uh, again, it's not, some, it's not a zone that we use a whole lot of except to uh, accommodate some uses uh, that are appropriate for a rural setting um, or can be appropriate in a rural setting. Um, but the requested classification in this case is for multifamily residential one with conditions. That is the lower of our two multifamily districts in terms of density. Uh, and the specific uh, request was for townhomes. Uh, they have also added uh, cluster subdivision and condominiums to the, the list of uh, requested uses. But the site plan reflects townhomes. Uh, so here are all of the permissible uses in the MF1 district. You can see that there's a list of about 20 different items. and then getting to their specific conditional proposal. Uh, again, townhomes, condos, and residential cluster development are those that were picked out of that list we saw on the previous slide. Um, we always advise a condition in there about group living that's protected by state or federal statute. Uh, we can't expressly exclude those, so we add those uh, just to cover our bases. And then additionally, they have proposed the following zoning conditions. Uh, these first five that you see are the same as what was presented in the case before. Um, so we have at least a step or stagger uh, in, in the buildings between each unit uh, to avoid the, the bulkiness that sometimes when you get five or six of them together could represent. Um, each one will have a covered porch, minimum 30 square feet. Uh, again, these are reflective of the, the least common denominator. Uh, each dwelling unit will have at least a one-car garage, 1,450 square feet of heated gross floor area, and um, each of them will at least have uh, two types of, of siding on the front, a pattern of siding, I should say. Uh, number eight was modified slightly, um, but again gets to the use of some masonry in the uh, product line. Um, so you can read through that one there. And then the last ones are new uh, to what was presented in the previous case. Um, so the side elevations was a concern of some of the council members last time. So they have made a commitment to include at least uh, three windows on the end units facing a street. Uh, so that would include the sides of the building facing Creech Road, uh, which would be kind of the entrance. Um, each townhome's unit's front door will use some kind of glass treatment, so it won't just be a solid door. You'll have either glass in the door, on the side, or at the top. Uh, again, to address the entrance off of Creech Road and the, and the kind of the beautification of it, uh, a three-foot tall landscape berm um, measured, I'm not sure what it means by measured from the right-of-way, but um, it shall be provided along the frontage on both sides of the main entrance. Number 12, no consecutive units will use an open gable style roof. Um, so what that means is a lot of times you'll get a, a forward slope of the roof. Uh, this will guarantee that there's at least some other kind of roof treatment on those buildings. Um, so you'll get a, a gable facing the opposite direction, uh, dormers or other such treatment for visual interest. And then finally, each unit shall provide a minimum of 16 square foot rear porch patio. We ask them to include something regarding the rear. Um, the site is, does have some challenges with uh, grading and retaining walls. Uh, so again, just keep in mind that while the majority um, may be much larger than that, there are a couple instances where that's probably about as big as they can go. Um, this site did not trip our requirements for a TIA, um, but we did try to take a look at some additional data to try to present to you just to give you a somewhat better idea of maybe what's going on out there. Um, the site has approximately 350 feet of road frontage on Creech. Um, in this area, as you saw in the picture from the uh, street maps, um, it's a 22-foot wide ribbon pavement maintained by NCDOT. There is an existing 60-foot right-of-way present. 
Um, as noted, the TIA was not required, but looking back on the last 10 years of data, um, we're seeing a fairly consistent trend there of upper 4,000s in terms of daily traffic count. Um, I imagine a lot of that probably is school related. Um, and I would imagine that the reason we're probably not seeing much fluctuation is that there's not been much in the way of development along that corridor at this time. Um, so here we did kind of take a, a new look at something for you. Um, what we tried to do here was take a look at a segment of roadway. So we went from one major intersection to another major intersection. And so those would be going northbound would be at Sandiford. Um, on going southbound, that would be at Garner Road. There's really no other major intersections between there. Um, so again, we know that there's slightly under 5,000 vehicles per day currently. Um, from there, we took a look at um, those parcels that would be likely to have their primary access on Creech Road. Um, so what that, the philosophy behind that is you kind of assign each parcel to its nearest major road segment and that being the idea that most of the traffic is going to go there. Um, and so we came up with uh, about 500 acres of land that um, is either been planned but not yet built and approved or acreage out there that is, is still largely vacant. Um, we chose a 7525. I want to say that that was uh, reflective maybe in a previous council desire of in the vision statements about single family versus townhome development. I might be making that up, but um, anyways, we decided that a 75% breakdown of single family detached versus 25% townhomes was probably ballpark of what we would expect in a corridor like this. Um, so we assigned 375 acres to single-family detached and 125 acres to townhomes. Um, we did have some recent single-family approvals such as the Ashton Forest and the Creech Road subdivision uh, being done by Habitat further up um, to kind of give us an idea of what single-family density is coming in at for this area. And that's currently at about 2.6 units per acre. Uh, townhomes, the only thing we really have to go by here is this proposal, which is at the max uh, recommended within the comp plan of five units per acre. So from there, we just took the trips that are generated per dwelling unit to get an idea of what the total new trips might be uh, in the long range future when everything's built out. We came out with about under just under 14,000 additional trips per day. Uh, as we've noted before, a two-lane road with turn lanes dedicated uh, where they need to be, which is what this roadway would be called for in our <coughs> transportation plan, uh, you're looking comfortably at about 18,000 for a max. So you're in the ballpark. Again, this isn't um, traffic engineering. When we're not traffic engineers, and I think even a traffic engineer would tell you that it's kind of, to a degree, somewhat fuzzy engineering. But um, for, take, take this for what it's worth. Um, we, we at least felt like we weren't out of the ballpark with what the comp plan calls for uh, in terms of development along Creech Road. And I would just take this opportunity to say that when we did do the comp plan, there was a high level look uh, done by the consulting firm to kind of try to make sure that our land use recommendations weren't overtaxing the proposed road system. Uh, and in some cases, we did make some changes based on that. Uh, looking specifically at the future land use map, we do have uh, this area coded as medium density. Uh, medium density is defined at two and a half to five units per acre. And this proposal does come in at the max, um, five units per acre. I believe before it was slightly higher. Uh, so there would have needed to have been a comp plan amendment uh, to accommodate that request at the time. Uh, but this one has brought the request to um, be in compliance with this recommendation. Uh, so based on that, town offers at the requested rezoning um, for 64 dwelling units and an overall build out at five units an acre is consistent with the map. Uh, in addition, we offered uh, that the request is reasonable and that you could uh, argue that it advances some of the plan's guiding principles for living spaces and keeping our character. 
Uh, staff is supportive of a recommendation finding this request uh, consistent with the Garner Forward Comprehensive Plan, uh, so long as the town council is satisfied with the voluntary zoning conditions offered up by the applicant. Uh, so basically what we're just saying there is that, you know, the zoning conditions are between you and the developer, but otherwise, by what we've checked for other things, we do feel that it would be considered compliant. And with that, I can either pause or I can go quickly into the subdivision. Um, I'll see quickly if we have a question or two on zoning, and then we'll sure. go right into the other, okay? Uh, I'll start down here. Mr. Singlin. Yes, sir. Okay, go around. Okay. Two quick questions. Challenger. On the previous slide, was there a typo on the request for the type of use? This is MF one two. Yes, that is. Yep. <laughs> so that should be again the MF one C two two seven. Yep. Okay. And my other question was on a, the dense, a density question. I'll have another with the development, but so with the land use plan, where it, it's medium density two and a half to five, is MF one. Is that six? And, or, and residential cluster, I think, is six, two. So which would take precedence in this right. zoning? So the MF1 zoning by itself would allow a higher, I think actually you can get that up to about eight or nine units per acre, but because they are conditioning this request, the cap would then be at five per their condition. So the condition is set with the five density. Right. Okay, yep. thank you, that, mm -hmm. that's the only question I have. Thank you. Questions. Advance. Okay. Okay. Um, so, council is all finished here. Let's see, Mr. Baggett. I'm trying to recall. Do I have other witnesses to testify on the zoning, or can he just go ahead and move right into the? Uh... He can go right into it. Okay. Okay. Mr. Uh, Treasonberg. Yeah. Sure. And this may answer some additional questions as well. Um, as noted previously, the, the overall acreage is just shy of 16 and a half acres. Um, they're proposing uh, with this request to make permanent plans for 12.8 of those acres. In the first request that you saw, that acreage was only about 11 acres. Um, so if you're wondering how the density came down, this is uh, the change that brings that down and I'll show you uh, what they changed in terms of the plan. Uh, so it's still 64 dwelling units proposal. Uh, in terms of tree cover, uh, they had a 12% minimum requirement. Um, and so what they've done is set aside more acreage for what's essentially now tree cover area. This percentage went up dramatically as, as a percentage of the overall project. And you'll see that in the map that comes forward. Um, but of the 12.8 acres that it would be committed under this plan, about 28% of it is committed as tree cover. Um, perimeter buffers are shown there in the street buffer, which is a distance separation um, where they're gonna do the enhanced landscaping is 20 feet. Um, and street trees, of course, are provided along all public streets as required. In terms of the open space, which is a combination of either recreational open space or environmentally sensitive areas, uh, they have a 10% minimum requirement. Uh, they've come in at 10.36% for those specific designations. Um, what you do see though is that there is additional tree save area, which does not, again, we talked earlier in the previous uh, session about how those two sometimes compete. Um, but essentially what you're seeing is an additional 2.85 acres uh, exclusively devoted to tree canopy preservation. Uh, in terms of parks, uh, we're going with a recommended fee in lieu from the Parks Department for uh, a fee in lieu of parkland dedication. So that would be applied at building permits. The Inspections Department and Fire Department have reviewed the plans and approved. Uh, as you can see here, the site does not contain any FEMA floodways or flood zones, but there are blue line streams that cross the property here and here. So the development proposal that you're seeing focuses on this acreage here and the uh, preservation areas are focused here um, backing up to school acres. 
Uh, the site would be subject to stormwater quality regulations for nitrogen as well as stormwater quantity um, for a typical 1, 10, and 25 year storms. Uh, they do have a wet retention pond shown to treat a portion of the nitrogen, um, but they still will be required to pay an offset to the mitigation bank. Water and sewer. Sewer traverses the site already and water is along the front of the property in Creech Road. And so again, we get back here to roads and sidewalks. We talked about the 350 feet of frontage on Creech. Um, the ultimate section is a three-lane three lane facility, so a center turn lane and still two through lanes in each direction, along with bike lanes, curb, gutter, and sidewalk on both sides. Uh, so they will need to de dedicate seven more feet of additional right-of-way to accommodate that and add approximately 11 and a half feet of pavement um, to Creech Road. Uh, this is being coordinated with the approved uh, construction plans for Ashton Forest, so everything ties together. Um, let's see, Bosch Drive, which is the main uh, entrance coming into the subdivision, uh, will, be be will be built to the edge of that first riparian buffer. Uh, they would be then required to pay in f a fee in lieu for their half of the crossing of that buffer. So here is the uh, site plan superimposed on the aerial, photo uh, aerial photography. Uh, so again, oops, and I hit the wrong button. There we go. Um, so that first riparian buffer comes right up through here. Uh, so they would build the road up to the edge of the buffer and then pay that fee in lieu for half of the crossing. This is the 3.66 acres that would be reserved for possible sale, perhaps um, eventually to the property owner to the south. If they were to ever come in with a development proposal, that would be the easiest way to service this pocket. Um, that second riparian buffer comes right through here, so we know that's not going to be disturbed. And there's just a sliver of land right here that would not be developable for anything. Um, so essentially what you have is all of the dark gray is preserved tree canopy and then even if this were sold here you'd end up with preserved tree canopy uh, in this area as well. Uh, this kind of shows the adjacent road network for Ashton Forest and a possible um, how the road network might work on the property to the south to promote some connectivity but nothing direct um, to promote cut through traffic. Here's a closer look and again here I shaded in blue on the future track of what uh, would end up being preserved in that case. So what you really end up with is a minimum 120 foot setback from the adjacent subdivision and most of that's going to be actually 200 feet or more. Um, I didn't measure this up here, but I would guess that's at least 500 to 600 feet in this area. Uh, parking for townhomes, um, we do have that required parking for guests. Um, so 16 spaces, they provided 16 with one additional handicap space. Uh, the lighting meets the requirements for the UVO as well as our staff recommendations for the color temperature and um, what they call the, the bug rating, the backlight, the uplight, and the glare. We try to keep those down. Um, but the street lighting will be, would be reviewed at construction drawing time. Uh, so when we get to the plan conformity, uh, the 2018 Garner Forward Transportation Plan identifies Creech Road as a two-lane divided. Uh, with proposed improvements along the frontage, this project as proposed could be found in conformity with that plan. Review of parks, recreation, open space, and greenways. Uh, did not reveal a plan uh, recommendation specifically on this site. Um, however, we did note that there is a greenway side path corridor uh, mapped through Ashton Forest uh, to the north, but then is mapped to follow Curtis and Longview Street. Um, so that it, there's one nearby, but it doesn't go through this property. Uh, so currently with the fee in lieu of parkland dedication, this project as proposed can be found to be in conformity with that plan. And finally, after sufficient review and plan revisions, we do find that the project is now proposed conforms to the regulations of the UDO. Uh, so long as the project specific conditions are met, 
Uh, prior to receipt of approved plans, the uh, fees need to be paid to the engineering department. Uh, prior to plat, we need a voluntary annexation petition and documents establishing an HOA. Uh, prior to the first building permit, uh, Raleigh's water and sewer fees need to be paid and the stormwater fees also have to be paid to the uh, storm, stormwater mitigation bank. And finally, prior to the issuance of the building permit, that fee in lieu of parkland has to be paid. And then our catch-all that if um, any other road requirement comes from NCDOT that uh, we're made aware of that and they're required to execute those improvements as well. The Planning Commission reviewed this at their August 17th meeting um, by a three to one vote. The Planning Commission did confirm the staff findings regarding uh, conformity with adopted town plans and policies and further accepted on that same uh, vote line <coughs> by staff statements regarding consistency with the Garner Forward Comprehensive Plan. Uh, they adopted them as their own and recommended approval to the council. Um, so again, we do have motions for you on pages 32 and 34 of your packet. Um, all the options are presented to you. Um, we have highlighted the ones since from our perspective it is in compliance. Um, but again, as noted, the zoning is, is uh, up to you based on your comfort level with the, with the conditions and your agreement whether or not it actually does conform. So with that, I'm finished, and I do know that the applicant is here, and one of the property owners, at least, is here as well. Okay, and we'll plan to hear from them. But first of all, Council, uh, give you a chance uh, to ask questions of uh, Mr. Treasenberg, starting on my right down here with Mr. Vance, if he has any. Please. Yes, Mr. Treasenberg, based upon the last plan that was brought before us last year, this has, does this not have more preserved natural space? It, it has does. more? Okay. Yes. Okay. And can you just briefly explain what's being done differently in, in proximity to Creech Road than what was done last time? Sure. Um, so as noted in their conditions in this area here, um, for these two building sets that are siding up to the road. Mm -hmm. um, they made a commitment to uh, three windows at least minimum in each of those side facades, as well as adding a landscaped berm um, on both sides of the entrance uh, to dress it up. Okay. Those are my only questions. Okay. Um, Mr. Dellinger. Just to confirm the, the project to the north is approved and it's not going to have a zoning change it's going to be developed as an R12, is that correct? Yes. Years and years ago, there was a, it wasn't called Ashton Forest at the time, the name's escaping me at the moment, um, but they came forward with a rezoning petition and got it rezoned to R9 from R40. That project never went anywhere, but the zoning remained. Um, so that's how that project came forward in um, Whenever the zoning's in place, then it just goes to planning commission. So that's how that one happened. There hasn't been any discussion or application for an increase in density or rezoning for the property to the north? Not at this time. And the one to the south, there's nothing planned, that, nothing been submitted for that? No. Nope. Is the idea, well, I guess I'll ask the applicant. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Singleton. Yes, Mr. Speaker, you touched on Mr. Vance's question. Uh, they noted that the previous application had 1.39 acres of open space, and this has the 4.4, which is on this particular picture, the upper left-hand corner, uh, which last time they didn't know what they were going to do. But because of the buffer down here, uh, as you clearly shown here, the you know, 120 at a minimum, uh, a lot of that's over 200 feet, if anything, if anything would be to be to be built back there. And that small area is three acres? Um, if I go back to 3.6 3. 6 6. acres. But yeah. that's the entire, that, be, that includes the, the buffer, so the, the buildable area is about half that. Right. Which yep. gentleman's shaking, one of the, the shaking his head. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, th I thought, uh, okay, thank you. Matthews, okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, Okay, thank you, Ms. Treasenberg. I, uh, the, supposing, does the applicant wish to be heard? Good, e 
evening. Uh, my name is Jay Calvin with Dan Ryan Builders of the Applicant. Um, do, I, do I need to state any uh, items for my expertise? I, I'm, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a stormwater engineer, traffic engineer, so I won't comment on any, anything that I'm not um, uh, supposed to. But um, I did want to clarify, yes, uh, uh, to Council Member uh, Singleton's comments about 2.3 acres, I believe, inside the, um, inside the riparian buffers. Um, I also wanted to know on the you can side. Put, you can put your mask down okay. when you hear about Sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> um, on the side of the units, the window uh, condition in there, it's, it's, the intent is not that it, it's, it's not just facing Creech Road. It will be facing all roadways. Um, and then I can further share that the intent is that all of the in units will have at least three windows on the side. And in many cases, there will be more. But there's the minimum configuration is three. Um, and then to Jeff's point as well, I know at Planning Commission that we had a question on this, um, on the 16 square foot rear patio, um, our standard is an 80 square foot, uh, 8 by 10. There are a lot of retaining walls on this site. Um, I don't have a completed, finalized grading plan, um, but we do believe there's going to be a couple lots in there that are going to get a little tight. Um, and so that's the expectation is that we'll at least have you know, stoop on the back one, but there might be one or two units in there that could not actually fit that full 80-foot um, patio. And I don't want to commit to something that I can't follow through on. Um, and I, I just, the plans aren't at a level of design yet, but I know exactly the size of those patios that they're going to be. Um, but again, uh, there there is uh, the property owners are here. Both property owners are here. So if you have any questions for them, and then uh, if you have any further questions for me, I'm happy to answer them best I can. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll see if there are any questions uh, from here. Mr. Matthews, Mr. Singleton, anything else? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, sir. no, it's, it's very good. Yeah. With, with the reserved area on the back southwest part of the property, is the intention to sell that to another developer to develop that southern lot? Is that the Yes, uh, yes, or there were also um, some members of the, the neighboring uh, subdivision um, that, that some of their properties back up to that area that expressed interest in purchasing it to extend their property lines back, uh, in effect, to protect themselves or their homes. So um, that was one option. Um, there's also the, the road extension, that parcel to the south of us um, is it has got some physical constraints, so an area like this could be helpful for them for providing connectivity. Um, uh, but yeah, the, it was just to leave some options for that parcel if it were ever to be developed or if a private party wanted to buy it in the future. And I guess this question is from Mr. Treisenberg on, since this is sort of like the first of several puzzle pieces, it looks like, so the plan would be to eventually extend uh, there be a connectivity with the road to the south there into the that neighborhood and go across all the way to Creech or to what? so yeah so what we wanted to show here was uh, you know currently there's this this road dead ends right now it's just a stub I don't even know that it has a name right. uh, into Longview but and again not to promote cut through traffic um, you know I think what we would propose is that this actually get cul de sac. Um, so that the connectivity has to turn and go through. So it, it, it's done in a way then that doesn't encourage the cut through traffic, but gives people options to get in and out. I think there's also probably some question at that point too as well from NCDOT about just how many, how many street driveway connections they're going to be willing to accept in a certain amount of distance. So because base, I guess you've already would per project one for Ashton Forest to the north to have a connectivity on the Creech Road. So whoever comes into this parcel in the south, we would be telling them you're not going to get a connection on the Creech Road? Well, the idea, <laughs> so a lot of it has to do with timing. Um, so if this project were to be approved and built, then it's got another way of access. If this project were not built and that property would come in, they would have to get um, Potentially, they would have to get some kind of access onto Creech. They do have access to the stub street in the back, so 
Um, but if you'd want to serve that whole piece of property just off of that one connection, I don't know if that's a great idea either. That's all for now. Mr. Bainton. Well, yes, at your, at your um, neighborhood meeting uh, that was held back in February, were you able to adequately answer the questions that are presented before you by the public? Uh, I believe so. You believe so? Uh, to, to the best of my ability, I answered every question. Um, I, I believe um, the biggest questions that we had uh, was related to price of the homes. Um, and again, there's it's a broad range market factors determine all that. Um, but a lot of the questions were concerning whether or not traffic uh, would cut through into their existing neighborhood. We explained that we have no direct uh, tie into that. Um, a, lot, a lot of the questions were concerning uh, traffic impacts um, uh, through drive through traffic into their neighborhood. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, okay, I believe, uh, do the owners uh, or the owner wish to be heard at this time? Yes, my name is uh, John Bosch. I uh, have been owning the property, the 15 plus acres, uh, the larger part of the development uh, land for since about 1997. So it's been a long time and uh, I actually had hoped that we would get something as I'm seeing uh, being developed and considered now. Um, I tried for a number of years to sell the property and because of the very difficult nature of it, as you can see, as I certainly as a layman see up there, uh, with the with the, the, the gullies and the streams and the the non access to the back, all of these things were pretty much overwhelming to any uh, any developer until this one came along and and uh, took the lead. So I I do appreciate their work and and the and the, the staff here about the complexity and professionalism uh, showed. So thank you. Question for the owner. None. Thank you, Mr. Bosch. Sure enough. Okay. Um, are there other persons here who wish to testify? Or was anybody else who was sworn that uh, would testify at this time? Okay, if you're a member of the public and uh, you have an interest in this, uh, if you will come to the podium and state your name and address. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm C. H. Chappelle owner of Chappelle's funeral home. We have four acres there. And this town, which I hope will become city one day, I'm looking forward for the growth. And as the brother said just in front of me about so much difficulties, modernization will really help. And I would like to see this city grow. And all that we can do. And we were willing to take a part of ours to let go to help bring in newness in our environment. Thanks, sir. Okay. Anyone else uh, desires to? My name is Kay Woodall, and I live on Longview Street, and it backs up to this piece of property that they're wanting to develop. I'm very opposed to it. I know Mr. Dane wants to build it. We've talked to him several times. But I look at my backyard and I see the trees back there. I hear the owls back there. I see the deer back there. And I walk that creek back there so I'm very opposed to it. I don't like it, not a bit. And I don't think any of the neighbors on Longview Street are gonna like it because we have enough traffic on our street that comes from Curtis Drive all the way through. And if they open that street, that little cul-de-sac that they want to open up, and if they open the creek,
Curtis Drive Street from the Ashton Park, there'll be more traffic in our neighborhood. And we have enough traffic in our neighborhood from the school and everything else. So I'm very opposed to it. Thank you, Ms. Woodall. <clears throat> Anyone else uh, care to speak? Okay, I'll recognize this gentleman. Good evening, I'm David Watson, uh, 102 Arlene Street. This doesn't fit. MF does not fit. Residential fits. R9 or R12. Multifamily does not fit on Creech Road. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Was there anyone else who cared to uh, offer testimony this time? Yes, sir. How's everybody? Yeah, my name is Rodney Stratton. I live on uh, Longview. And, uh, you know, it connects to my back property, which I've um, been living there a long time. So the trees and everything, the creek should stay there. What, you, what you're going to have, you're going to have traffic coming through a cul-de-sac kind of thing, okay? The security is a, is a problem, all right? If, if you have traffic coming through there, if you extend Curtis Drive or extend Powell, and you're going to have a cul-de-sac, okay? And, and why is this property being built? Nobody said anything about it. Why is this property being built? No one says anything about it. So the cul-de-sac, the streets coming through, I live on Longview. There's a security problem, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Yolanda. Chappelle and to the mayor and the council members, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. I would like to welcome places for people to live. I'd like to welcome, I know that sometimes people don't really want things to happen, but growth must go on. We cannot stay stagnant where we are, and we have to provide places for people to live, security. We've got good policemen in Ghana. We own and operate Chappelle's funeral home. We've not had a single break-in. We've not had any issues. But I want to say that we do need growth. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, Jay, come forward, please. My name is Tim Holton, 411 Longview Street in Garner. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff, community members. Character, 24 times. No less than 24 times the word character appears in the citizen-inspired comprehensive planning document known as the Garner Forward Plan, completed just a couple of years ago, as you know, in 2018. As that plan itself states, quote, a big reason that so much care and effort were dedicated to working with the public and team members was that the input from all of these efforts would lead to the overarching goals and objectives. Character 24 times. This word character is so important to the citizens of Garner that it is placed as the leading and overarching guiding principle which states, again, I quote, building on and conserving the existing character of Garner. This process is tough. We hear it is tough for the real estate development community. 
Well, it's really tough for the community community. For John and Jane Q. Public, who love Garner with its room to breathe, living, this process is incredibly challenging. As most of you know by now, I am a transplant to this beautiful place. Born in Oklahoma, raised in Wisconsin, and as an adult, lived all over the country. My wife and I have been citizens now for a couple of years. So I'm a transplant to Garner, to the Triangle, just like most of the 65 to 100 people, depending who you talk to, who are moving to this region every day from all over the country, and who are comparing and contrasting Garner along with the other towns in the region. So I'm a transplant. And as you know, and you can probably tell, I feel more than a little bit uncomfortable coming up here. And there are a number of reasons for it. One thing, what I have to say might sound foolish. I don't know. I was warned by my neighbors from the start that I, that we, would be wasting our breath. Still, I don't want to disappoint them. There is also the fact that I'm not from these parts. I can't claim to have lived here for decades and decades like so many of my neighbors. In the back of my mind, I imagine some people in this room are thinking, who does this son of gun think he is telling us what he thinks? I can understand why some might think or feel that way. But I have come to learn over the past couple of years as a Garner citizen, that I am actually very much of the same heart and mind as my neighbors, and most of the John and Jane Q public who I speak with. I have come to learn that these decades-long residents have a similar gut-level, heartfelt love and desire to see that we <clears throat> build on and conserve the existing character of Garner. Appearance, brand, design, quality. These other four words appear no less than 106 times in that 90-some page Garner Forward Plan. Character, appearance, brand, design, quality. These words are shouting from the pages because these are the issues that are important to the citizens of this town. Now, from my interactions with some of you and, and the staff, many of of it through the UDO project and elsewhere. I have come to know you as decent human beings. You are. I'll take Mr. Jeff Kriesenberg over there. Not only is he, his brain, an encyclopedia of the technical details in the UDO, he may be one of the nicest people to ever walk the face of God's green earth. So thank you for being decent human beings. I mean that. And still, Decent human beings come to this with different motivations and concerns, and with very different lasting impacts that permanently affect the quality of our future lives here on God's green earth. Remember, we've got folks on the front and the back side of this property who have spent decades here never imagining a project with this kind of density on that R40 land. I would hazard that even Mr. Bosch, who purchased the, the land nearly a quarter century ago, would have ever dreamt such a 64-unit project on this R40 land when he purchased it. We can do better. We've got to get this right and address the concerns of the neighbors and citizens. Now, do you know how many times the word character was discussed tonight? One time. Unfortunately, this word, the word that drives the comprehensive plan's leading and overarching principle, gets virtually no developer discussion. Whether it's here before council, before the planning commission, or with the neighbors at the neighborhood meeting. For developers to propose projects and to fail to provide a clear and comprehensive discussion of this leading principle, is to fail to abide by the overarching heart and soul and spirit of the citizen-inspired Garner Forward Plan. Mr. Holton, I don't want to be rude, but I will have to ask you to sort of wrap it up. Okay. 
you're using your time. I'm, I'm, I'm here on behalf of a few other folks, so. Okay. Um, let's see. I want to respect your time, so. Thank you. Um, if you'll bear with me, I'll, I'm going to cut to like the last few Thank you. paragraphs, okay? So a couple of weeks ago, I watched the proceedings for the 1300 unit assemblage project on 401 near 1010 Road, a big project. The density of that 277 acre project with a massive 500 unit apartment complex, 455 townhomes and 300 plus homes is actually lower in density than the density they are proposing here for Kennedy Ridge and both of which sit on 40, R40 land. Kennedy Bridge is discussed, five units per acre. The massive assemblage pro project is 4.76 units per acre, while including a large pool, lifestyle center, cabana, play lawn, outdoor gathering space, and trails. Many of you responded positively to Mr. Roberts, uh, who was presenting that project, on how he worked closely with the neighbors of Assemblage to address their concerns, including the creation of a list of some nine additional conditions. Many of you saying, this is the way it's supposed to be. I agree. And we want and wanted to be afforded the same. I, we would like some additional conditions of our own. And we do not believe, based on comments from the developer during both neighborhood meetings, that they pose a severe or, or undue burden. Namely, first, that these original 64 units will be the end of it. The area that sits in a sort of limbo state, there in the bottom corner, will all be permanently designated as usable recreation and open space, negating their need for a potential road or potential future development in those woods. And since the development provides no built amenities, usable recreation and open space such as this would be a wonderful natural green space amenity, which by the way would be consistent with another key principle in the Garner Forward Plan for recreation opportunities and green spaces. It would also serve as a natural buffer between two very different kinds of neighborhoods, a mature mid-century neighborhood and this new much denser style of living. And while this doesn't seem to mean that much the, at these meetings, it will permit habitat to remain for the deer and the owls and the other wonders of nature that visit us from those woods. And for the kids in our neighborhood who come down to play in those woods. Maybe it could even be designated and dedicated as Town of Garner Parkland, I don't know. But 64 un units to be the end of it. Enough is enough. On a different note, there are many possible architectural options to be placed on the 64 concrete foundations. Despite the time lapse waiver, we see no updates on what the project will look like and what it intends to place on those slabs. And we think it's appropriate that the architecture, craftsmanship, and materials be shared and dis discussed fully to determine that they successfully satisfy the leading principle of character. Mr. Holden. This is the last paragraph. Please. And I am done. You've, you've, you've been I with promise. us over 10 minutes, okay. Maybe I am foolish. I hope my neighbors were wrong about wasted breath. But I think there is still a chance to work this out, to do better, to get this right for a lot of decent people. But without these few citizen-inspired conditions, we ask that you either delay a decision until the list of conditions is created or deny the project as inconsistent with the overarching requirement of the Garner Forward Comprehensive Plan, that of building on and conserving the existing character of Garner. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, I'm supposing that is the last speaker. Uh, Mr. Holton indicated that perhaps he was expressing the views of some of some of the other neighbors. Uh, and on occasion, we certainly have one person speak for others. So unless there's someone else who wants to speak, um, I'm going to close the public hearing. And council, I am um, asking you to consider a motion. First of all, I believe on the uh, rezoning portion of the presentation, and then we will move to the other segment. So is there a motion on the uh, rezoning request? Can I ask Mr. Friesenberg a clarification question? Because yeah. it got brought up by, by a couple of folks, uh, Ms. Uh, Woodall, Mr. Stratton. There's no plans on, on this proposed subdivision to connect to either Longview or Curtis Drive? No. Ashton Forest, that doesn't connect to Curtis Drive, does it? No. So there's, the, the cul-de-sac, oh, that confused everything. There's no plans to connect anything to Longview or Curtis Drive in this plan, or Ashton Forest? Not with this plan, no. Okay, I just wanna make sure that that was clarified so everyone understood that there's no plans to connect anything to Longview Drive. I have a question and a clarification. My, my big concern with the project is the connectivity. And while this plan doesn't have that plan for that road extension, it clearly has a stub out for connection to the south. My concern is if you, you need, the, whatever properties to the south needs to connect either to the west or to Creech Road, but not both. There's no, if you can cut through, there are two schools, there's traffic, people coming down Creech Road, they're gonna be like, oh, Bosch Drive, I'm gonna turn down here and I'm gonna cut through and go to Longwood. This project as presented is the impetus for cut through traffic. Unless, and, and how you, I mean, I guess the, and how you mitigate that is the other question. And it could be mitigated by getting rid of that southern stub and saying, well, we're not going to allow, and then that, the developer who comes in with the southern property would have to make a decision on how they wanted to develop. And I'm sure, I'm sure there'd be opposition to a cut through road going all the way through. I guess my other question for the developer is, and I guess it's at his discretion to answer the question or not, but I think it, it it's important is, is, is the project viable without the Southwest portion being sold? Um, so again, our, our plan is not to sell it. The plan is to leave it as undeveloped area or reserved area in the future. If that changed, we would have to come back through um, and submit a subdivision plan. Um, the, the intention of leaving it there is to provide flexibility for either the town, uh, adjacent developers, property owners to the west, whoever it may be. Um, and, and then to your other point about the connectivity, uh, the site plan follows the, the UDO requirements for connectivity and, and block standards and all those sort of things. So um, again, the, the, the design is, is driven by the code. Um, and then again, the, the selling of the property is not factored in our financial model at all, but it, it is a requirement, I believe, of providing this connectivity. If, if that <coughs> southern parcel, and again, Jeff, Jeff would have to speak to this, but if that southern parcel were uh, developed as a cul-de-sac, um, I don't know what your cul-de-sac length maximum is, but they would more than likely be required to have multiple connection points to it as well. Um, there, I believe it's called Powell Row. There's a dedicated right of way that is intersecting that parcel to the south. So th there will be a road there. Um, how and when and and if it connects to this property um, is is for another development. Um, and and if you want to alleviate cut through traffic or like Jeff mentioned earlier, uh, ultimately have access out on the Creech Road um, and not force traffic to go through the Longview subdivision, then, then you want to have connectivity to the subdivision in the future, which is, again, the reason why we're trying to retain that, uh, that the flexibility within that two and a half acre parcel that's left over. <clears throat> okay, any other council have a question while we're questioning? I'm ready for a motion in a minute. 
Mr. Speaker, uh, could we pull that slide up with this cul-de-sac we keep talking about? I've seen it earlier. I'm just trying to refresh my mind here and see where we're at with this thing, make sure I'm understanding properly. So uh, let, me, let me preface this by saying I wanted to try to give you all some context um, of what the larger picture could look like in the future. Um, but by no means, as Mr. Colvin said, you know, that's another development decision for another time. So again, people have asked about where these roads might go in the future. This is a very preliminary look at what it could look like in a way that doesn't promote cut through traffic, um, but would show some connectivity. Um, again, connectivity is important. Um, I can't stress that enough. Without it, you end up with these five mile long blocks like Aversboro, Timber to 50 to Buffalo. And you get four intersections that are heavily overloaded and Creech and Garner is already a bad intersection. Um, so again, I try not to bring those too locally for you because the more locally you bring it, the more, I guess, impassioned folks are about it, rightfully so. Um, but we have to keep these larger um, goals in mind. So again, just to preface, this is just a schematic of what it could look like uh, in a way so that you can get an idea of how it might work. So if, if I'm looking at this correctly, that 3.66 acres is there by owner, that's the ones, as I'm looking at this map now, that butt up to those neighborhoods we've been talking about. And uh, is there a reason we're trying to hold on to that 3.66 acres since that seems to be the stumbling block here? Or would you like to come to some resolution and put this issue behind us? It will be amenable uh, to the neighbors and uh, nobody will be building in their backyard. Um, Just asking. Yeah. Um, again, I, I believe what will happen is if you dedicate that entire area, you're going to um, effectively eliminate the development potential of the parcel to the south of it. And the potential, again, it's not our near term intent to sell that to anyone, um, it, but in the event that we did, then that would, uh, could potentially greatly harm that parcel, and then you've got a, a dead spot in the middle of your town for a long time. So you're telling me that parcel could be built on and developed, am I hearing you correctly? In conjunction with the, the parcel to the south is my expectation for it. I mean, this 366 right now, it's, um, reserve by owner, so that can be developed. We would have to submit a new site plan. Um, I'm not sure of the entire process. I believe that would have to come back in front of you for it to get approved. Um, so in order for that 3.66 acre parcel or 3.68 parcel to be developed, it would have to come back in front of council. It would have to meet all the town codes and standards. Um, there would be public hearing associated with it. Um, you, you would have uh, full authority to rule on it on, on as a plan was presented. And then we'll be going through this again. On that three point. That's what, I, that's what I'm hearing you say. Yes, sir. I'm trying to um, alleviate a problem now and one for later on. So uh, I'm just offering this up and because. Uh, but, but the 3.66 only 2.3 is developable. And with setbacks, you're only talking to the townhomes. If you got five an acre, you couldn't even build 10, town, 10 townhomes right there. You got to kind of think, remember the big buffer. Plus, the area to the south is owned R12. So if someone's going to do something, they're going to ask to rezone it. Yep. So if it doesn't get rezoned, then you don't have a stub out. You don't have any trouble when you don't develop that. Takes care of the issue. The question is, I mean, two questions. I'll ask them at the same time. You, how would converting that 3.66 all to dedicated open space or protected tree coverage negatively impact that southern parcel. My other question is, if somebody came in and wanted to develop that southern parcel, which is all trees, wouldn't they go in and buy that 366 so that they could get a significant portion of their tree coverage covered and then just clear cut the rest of it? I, I, again, I, I can't speak to um, 
how somebody would develop it or how they would use it. Um, I can speak to how I look at properties, and if, if I were if I were the owner of the parcel to the south of me, um, I would be looking for any wiggle room I had, any additional acreage that I could add to either uh, create connection points that are going to be required by the code, uh, as you said, speak uh, uh, call uh, grab tree coverage area. If we dedicate that as tree coverage area today, then that would eliminate the potential for that to be used for a future subdivision. Um, again, the the near and medium term use of this land is going to be undeveloped raw land that will in all likelihood be um, passed to the HOA and uh, maintained as, as community property. Um, but again, the intention of, of leaving it as a, a reserve by owner is to allow flexibility in the future. Thanks, sure. I like Mr. Else? Matthews' suggestion of going ahead and dedicating a significant swath of that to open space and 200, 300 feet buffer there to the neighboring neighborhood. I'm a little confused as so much concern with the, few, the development of this other property. If I were a developer, I'd be worried about getting my project through. Um, that's just me. Okay. Anything from you, Mr. No. From you, Ms. Beringer? Okay, on this way. Um, well, Council, we've had considerable discussion on this matter, and I understand the different passions and views on this, but we're called upon to, uh, to make some decision on this matter. Um, and the sequence of order is, um, is a motion, if you're so inclined. So again, I will Call on council uh, to consider a motion on the first element, which is the rezoning, which would have to pass before we can do the other. Mr. Mayor, I move that we find CUDZ 2002 Kennedy Ridge, find consistent with the comprehensive plan and approve. Okay. Motion has been properly made. Is there a second? Okay, second by Ms. Beringer. All right, before we vote, any, any other um, hopefully brief discussion or questions? Well, one comment, and it's a good discussion period after the motion and the second. Um, I do, I'm, I'm glad that the development to the north has uh, will go forward without a rezoning. There is a precedent being set on the density here in this entire area for more multifamily one zoning and higher density. Couple that with what looks like a preliminary uh, traffic flow that would create cut throughs. I think that is very problematic. Again, with, you've got schools. You've got, I uh, see it as a, as a big problem to do this rezoning um, at this time. Okay, any other comments, observations? Mr. Mayor, uh, the project itself, I have no problems with it, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but again, my concern is that rear buffer down there. And uh, so the project itself, I have no concern with, I think it'd be fine, but I'm concerned about the homeowners that back up to it with this piece of property here that uh, we're not sure is going to happen, uh, what's going to happen with it, and we could be revisiting again a year from now. So uh, that's my concern is that rear buffer there with the homeowners to join it. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think, uh, I, I, I no. think at this point uh, we're, we're, we're finished. I tell you, I think uh, we have a motion before us that we have to consider. Thank you. Okay, Council, um, I think everybody's had a chance to speak uh, or a question that you wanted to. Is that correct, everybody here? So, um, all those in favor of the motion that was just articulated by Council Member Vance, please say aye. 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 All those in opposed to the motion, excuse me, articulated by Council Member Vance, please say no.
No. No. There is not a vote. Does that count as an affirmative vote? No. Excuse me. Okay. I didn't know you were listening that close, Mayor. Didn't hear. <laughs> okay. The motion is defeated by a three to two vote. So the rezoning is not approved. Uh, at this point, Mr. Baggett, then, I then guess. Then there has to be a motion made to set forth like that, correct, Mr. Attorney? To deny it. Sir? To deny it. To deny it? Yes. Do you have a motion that has to be made? Yes. To, to deny it. With a finding. Really? Go ahead. You word it better. Mr. Mayor, I move that the council find rezoning request inconsistent with the Garner Ford plan for the following reasons, uh, concerns with uh, connectivity, transportation, buffering, and therefore I move the town council reject the recommendation of the planning commission and deny rezoning request CUDZ 20-02. Second. Okay, motion made by Mr. Singleton and properly seconded by Mr. Matthews. I think we probably uh, exhausted conversation, but does any other council member care to uh, make a point or question before we vote? Okay, you're now voting on a motion to deny the rezoning. So all those in favor of the motion that's properly before us, please vote aye. 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 All those who would vote against the motion, please vote no. No. Okay, the motion to deny is passed on a 3-2 vote. Um, we don't have to have a majority on that, do we, Mr. Baggett? I mean... Uh, no, that's fine, a majority okay. of a quorum. You're, you're fine. Yeah, okay, all right. So at this point, with a motion to deny, we do not, uh, I don't believe, take up the other matter. Is that right? Correct. The other matter dies uh, in, in conjunction with the action taken on the rezoning. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's um, any other points of clarification that are needed at this time, Mr. Baggett? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, the motion is denied at this time, and so um, we will take up the next item on our agenda at this point. Which is... A new and old business item, and Mr. David Beck is the presenter in this case. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, Bringing to you this evening a uh, recommendation to select a lender to finance uh, the bulk of our uh, VERT replacement program for fiscal year 21. If you'll recall in the budget process, uh, it was proposed to finance the majority of that. Uh, a little over $927,000 would be financed. Uh, about 160000 would come from fund balance to, um, to buy the... Uh, the vehicles and equipment as part of the VERT uh, replacement plan. So we uh, crafted an RFP that went out to over 60 regional and local banks and lenders. We received uh, a good response to that RFP, received 14 proposals, um, and presented you with a bid tab that summarizes all those proposals. The recommendation is that um, you select key government finance as the lender for this transaction. Uh, they proposed a rate of 1.093% uh, over a four-year term, uh, and we would end up with the total uh, financing cost for this transaction of uh, just over $952,778. Uh, so it's sort of two actions we would ask you to take. One would be to select key as the lender and then there is a resolution approving the financing terms that goes along with that. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Uh, Council, 
Any questions uh, regarding the uh, presentation and recommendation by uh, our finance director? Hearing none. Just a, a quick question. One, I'm, I, I'm glad we did this. I think it's a good, given the circumstances. Um, the other is there is there any uh, way to offset, I know it's not a high interest rate at all, is there any way to offset that small interest rate uh, in the in investment somewhere? With because I know otherwise we would have been paying the full ma full amount. Is there any way to offset that um, with those fun, uh, other funds? Um, it'll be offset a little bit be because we're going to have to set up an escrow account when we close the transaction. So the funds are going to sit in an account probably two to three months and draw some interest um, that'll be to our credit. Um, beyond that, you know, we have other funds invested, other town funds invested, and unfortunately with the interest rates like they are, it's, it's yeah. kind of dwindling uh, month to month, but, um, but we will recoup a little bit of that uh, while it's sitting in that escrow account. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? So I believe Mr. Beck has asked us to uh, essentially consider two manners. One is selecting... Of a key, excuse me, key government finance as the lending institution. So I'll entertain a motion on that recommendation. So moved. Second. Second. Properly seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to select key government finance as a lending institution, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed, vote no. And it is carried <coughs> unanimously. And then the second part of that is the approval of the uh, actual terms itself under the resolution of 2020-24-22. Is there a motion on that portion of the request? Move, move to accept. Okay. Second. Move properly seconded by uh, Council Member uh, Beringer. Any other, excuse me, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that motion, please vote aye. 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 Any opposition? It is so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Thank you. Hopefully you could work on this. Looks like you got some money to spend. <laughs> or to borrow, I guess. Thanks, okay. sir. Okay. Um, council, uh, we're moving on towards what would ordinarily be our 9 o'clock um, uh, recess. But uh, I think we can wrap these things up probably unless we're anticipating any long discussion. So you want to move on and let's finish up the agenda. So uh, committee reports are next. Uh, I'm not aware of any. None. Okay. I think Mr. Dickerson has something to say. Yeah, I'm going to wait until you came to me. And I, and I apologize. Um, I did mean to ask for a closed session. Discuss the potential matter of litigation. I discussed it with the town attorney before the meeting, but forgot to interject when you had the um, agenda approved. So if we could get that. Okay. And I, I don't expect it's going to be a, a really long one. Okay. So. so how about if we hold that to the end and yeah. we could take a short recess and go into closed right. session. And, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, any, anything else from you, Mr. Manager? Um, I do have some reports. Okay. Um, you have the Garner info. But um, we also have some matters that we just want to update you on, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hodges to, to do that. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, Mr. Johnson could not be here tonight, so one of these I'm going to handle on his behalf. We're wrapping up the resurfacing contract for the year, and um, we had originally brought to you two uh, crossings that the contractor for the resurfacing was going to perform for us, moving the Timber Drive crossing and adding the crossing at the YMCA on Avisboro. Um, council approved us to move forward with that and the same vendor was doing it so there was sort of an implication that we would just use the funding from the resurfacing project for it however when we got to the end of the resurfacing project we realized there's about enough money left in the resurfacing project to handle two issues that mr. Johnson thinks are pretty important that are traditional resurfacing issues so we wanted to bring toward forward tonight those two items and then ask your consideration of us moving the funding for the two crossings to be uh, street and sidewalk bond funds, which is how we've handled the previous crossings that we've added over mm -hmm. the last few years. That's about $71,000 that we would add to the other street and sidewalk projects. 
and with the balance of $49,000, there are two projects that we could take care of that total about $45,000. One would be the next most critical street um, on the list, um, and that one um, is White Cap Lane, and that was one that Mr. Um, Johnson had hoped to be able to get into this year's work. Um, another item is one that Mr. Singleton brought to our attention. There is a section of road, uh, section of Pool Drive um, on the eastern portion of Pool Drive um, where the, the um, asphalt is, uh, is coming up uh, pretty badly and we believe that recently added bus service has caused some conditions that I think staff has known over the years that we had a year of paving that was not at, to, maybe to town standards and we didn't know it until much after that. I think that work was done about 10 years ago um, and we're now seeing some consequences of that. So because of the, the enhanced bus service, we think it would be great to get that street, uh, that section of street in good condition and then also address White Cap Lane. So, so the, the request of you tonight is consideration of using the remaining, um, the resurfacing dollars will cover these two issues and then we would need to move the two crossings to street and sidewalk bond funds or some other funds should you choose, but that's where the others were paid for. You need a motion or would that be on the consent agenda for the future? You need a motion? Um, or a it thumbs up? Actually, I don't believe I action would be necessarily up. needed until we come back and do a final true up of the street and sidewalk bond funds. I'm looking for Mr. Beck to... Well, I think we'll bring we're a budget. We're going to have to do a change order Yes, but we'll have to bring that back on a future. Yes, that will have to come back on another. Yes, yeah, so uh, that agenda. that'll have to come back at another another meeting date um, to add that work onto their contract, and um, you know it, it's because it is we're still going to do the crossing, so we're not swapping out you right. know dollar for dollar. Uh, so so we was, need to bring that back. So as was noted here, can that be put on a cons future consent agenda? It, it can, approved. and if it can be ready in time, we might even ask your indulgence in doing it at the work session next week just to be able to allow the contractor to move forward in a more timely manner. I know you don't often take those up, but if you're, if you're willing for us to have a, an action item on there, if we can prepare it in time, we will. If not, we'll have it for the following week's meeting. We're waiting for cons the, the final paperwork for the con from the contractor. Everybody. We, we sometimes do a okay. thumbs up, I guess. Okay. Come okay. Back on thank you again. very much. And thank you to Mr. Johnson for bringing these um, items forward for us. Um, we mentioned the Timber Drive crossing. We've updated council on the crossing late last week, but for the sake of folks that are watching from home, we did just want to take an opportunity to, to tell, remind you and tell <laughs> the public that um, one of the projects you did authorize was moving the, the pedestrian crossing um, near Buckingham on Timber Drive to a position slightly west of the Greenway crossing. Much of that construction work was completed by the end of last week. We decommissioned the crossing at Buckingham. As, as you and the public may know, we've had some um, challenges with, with dangerous crossings there. But because we have not finished the construction, we've taken some measures at the end of the week last week to try to make things as safe as possible until we can, can finish that work. That included bagging the pedestrian crossing signals so people would not rely on those to be able to cross the street in an unsafe place. We've affixed signage to the post of those crossings to alert people to please cross um, either at the new crossing using extreme caution because it is not finished or at a signalized crossing. We've installed signage at the crosswalk indicating the same messaging. Public Works removed vegetation that was in the median of timber that was blocking the sight line of view to the new crossing. They'll be coming back with some more trimming and then our communication staff has been push, pushing messaging out on next door for all of the neighborhoods that we knew would likely be using that crossing and also pushing messaging out on all of our social media outlets and channels that has been also picked up by police, parks, and parks and recreation. That messaging also includes letting citizens know that the new sidewalks on the south side of timber are complete and that will alleviate the need for many people to have to cross timber to be able to make a loop back around towards the parks. So we just wanted to make sure that council um, got the, the word about those improvements to help us uh, spread that word and also for anyone watching to know what was going on with that crossing. We hope that all that work will be completed by the end of next week. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hodges. And yeah, I have noticed, I think it's on Nextdoor, one of the, uh, uh, the uh, online 
services uh, that that information. I think there was a picture of the uh, of the uh, the sign there that's covered over for right now. Anyway, yes. yeah. So hopefully everybody's very aware of that. And as you say, the sidewalk on the, the on the park, what I call the park side, it is available for use. And so people, unless they just need to cross the street, they can certainly use that sidewalk. Thank you. Absolutely can. Okay. And we had one more item tonight. Just wanted to update council that the Connect Conference that the town co produces with the Chamber of Commerce has been scheduled. Um, it is a virtual format this year. Um, and um, the the format will be having four consecutive Thursday mornings for an hour and 15 minutes. Some experience that Mr. Stallings and other ha others have had in participating in day-long virtual conferences. Um, we took his suggestion and I think everyone um, is glad now that we've worked out four consecutive Thursdays beginning October 22nd going through November 12th. We'll send you information about it, but wanted to let you know that it's going to be 10 a.m. to 11.15 in the morning, those four consecutive days. We're going to have one day that's sort of TED Talk style presentations by five presenters, exciting lineup of folks there. We're going to have a public sector panel that includes the town's economic development staff, Wake Economic Development, Triangle J, Council of Governments, and other partners. We're going to have the Amazon facilities manager speak at one of the, those days. And then the last day is going to be a development panel that's going to be a chance for the town and the chamber to provide an update on economic development projects and then a panel discussion that will include um, uh, four developers that are doing uh, commercial, residential, um, industrial, and large residential projects in Garner. So I think that the, the chamber staff and, and the town staff have worked to put together what I think is a really good uh, uh, agenda for a conference, and we'll be sharing that with you. If you get the updates from the chamber yourself, you'll notice a registration button. If you're going to register for the conference, please let Ms. Um, Gibson know that you'd like to register. We do have registrations included in our sponsorship of the event, and so we will process those through the clerk's office so that we don't generate a, a separate registration at the council, I mean at the chamber. What are the dates, John? October 22, 29, November 5, and November 12. And if you do get chamber emails, I think you may have received one yesterday that had a sneak pre preview, preview of the website, uh, which I think is garnerconnect.com, but I'm not sure if that's exactly it. And then it has those dates included as well. So thank you to chamber staff and to town staff for all their work on reacting to the current situation, putting together what I think is going to be a good event for both organizations. I was wondering if they were going to try to do the Connect Conference. That's something that's become almost an institution in our town now. So I'm glad to know that it's going to be done in this fashion, uh, necessitated by the circumstance we find ourselves in, I'm sure. So, okay, uh, was that it for you, yes, Mr. Yes. Manager? Okay, I always give Mr. Baggett an opportunity. Got a place on him for the attorney. Uh, well, it, it occurs to me this is my last meeting with y'all, I think. Oh, no. I think your new attorney uh, will be on board the first week in October. That's true. And you won't have a meeting that I will be at before then. Could always invite you to the work session, I guess. Well, I, I'd time. love to come. <laughs> but it, it has been an honor to work with y'all. And, and, Mayor, you've been wonderful. And all of you are uh, the epitome of public service. This is a great town. When the town attorney position was advertised, several people I knew who were interested called me and asked about the town. And I said, you could not ask for a better place to live and work than for the town of Garner. It is just wonderful, and I really mean that. Rodney and Matt and John and all the staff, plus all of you, are just the best. So it's been a pleasure, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you, sir, for those kind words. And I was going to say, uh, I guess if I'd have had it in my mind that uh, tonight was going to be your last appearance, I'd have tried to write a speech for you too, but, uh, <laughs> uh, he do, he do, he do. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, he yeah, yeah. I could have found a quote or two that would have fit you. I think, uh, it would have been this morning if you didn't find a quote or two. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, so now you've got, um, now uh, you have Mayor. to come back next week. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> in the next uh, little bit, uh, I think we'll probably try to try to do something uh, yeah that's you know, not necessary it's like, it's, like a, it's like a brief romance you know it was, it was nice but <laughs> you don't have to go on and on about it <laughs>
Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't think I've seen Mr. Baggett this happy since he's been here. <laughs> Move awful slow when you said you were going to need me only for about four or five months. He stuck around for longer than that. So, uh, Mr. Baggett, uh, yeah, I'm sure I speak for Council. They can speak for themselves. But as a new mayor, uh, you know, you you've been the first attorney really that I've worked with uh, as mayor, and uh, it's certainly been a joy for me. And you've uh, you've uh, provided me good guidance and kept me on the path. So, our new attorney will uh, will have some challenges there to pick up and move on. I'm sure, but. Um, uh, the, the feeling is mutual in terms of uh, just the way you presented yourself and and then step right in and assisted us. It's been uh, it's just been tremendous. And if anybody wants to say a few words, that's fine. But uh, that's okay. All right. All right. Well, I just I can't imagine. Uh, it, it was sad to um, for Bill to resign when he did, but I cannot imagine someone who could have filled that position for and served us better and hit the ground running. We, mm -hmm. You've done a lot for us. You've saved us a lot of headaches. You've given us a lot of wonderful direction and kept us from flying blind sometimes. And that's that's just immeasurable. So, well, you, ha you. you have a great staff. They, they take yeah. care of things. Yeah, they do. Thank you. Thank you. OK. OK. Thank you, sir. I think it's the first time he's made a report in these sessions. So. Uh, no, I'm teasing. He's probably made a few others, but uh, thank you for your good words. Council, uh, if you will be somewhat brief, we'll do council reports and then we'll adjourn into the closed session, I guess. So uh, why don't I start with Miss uh, Beringer here? Let me, can I have 15 minutes? Sure. <laughs> but we're going to only listen for two. No. Uh, equal time, equal time. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have anything tonight. Okay. 12 items. No, you don't. Uh, no, I don't. I'm just kidding. You got me. No, I do. I have only three. Um, one, the, the Van Doris Spring sidewalk was on the agenda, the consent agenda. I'm curious as to what the, the timeline for that completion is. The Van Doris Springs, the sidewalks. So, the, the item that was on your consent agenda was to add some services for staking yeah. for right of way acquisition. So, um, Mr. Raspberry, Attorney Raspberry, who's helped us with land matters, is going to start that process for us. And I don't have a date, Mr. Dellinger, of when we think we can bid it. If Mr. Okay. Johnson has a better update, I'll get it from him and pass it on. But I think we need to, this is, um, this is one of the first uh, right of way acquisitions we've done since Mr. Anderson was here and a project that's got some challenges to it. Okay. So I think we need to get those first, but we'll update I you. Was just, yeah, I was just curious. The other is, um, have we gotten any feedback from Raleigh on the Cloverdale letter about the Stub Road? No. Um, did Jeff Lee seem like there was? He did. Um, okay. I will, we don't. I, we can. If you send an email, if we've got heard anything back. It and seemed the other, like that wasn't going to go as smoothly for the applicant as they maybe was hoping. But, yeah. But I can look uh, back. Raleigh staff did have to send the developer back to do something yeah. again. That that it started the clock, a clock over, maybe not the clock over. Okay. But I, we'll get a more thorough, formal update to you feedback they had to the, us about it. Um, the other is, do we have a, and I, I think John sent an email out, is there a new projected timeline for uh, Amazon to finish? <laughs> and what is the definition of substantially complete given where, I know it won't be complete complete, but what, what was sort of the standard for them for substantially complete when Joan Sausage and Garner and the rest, do we know? Yeah, I think we're waiting for them to be Complete on the road work. I mean, can I add yeah, further? Yeah. Complete, and I don't have your email in front of you, but the yeah. email I forwarded to you, I believe, yesterday, there was a bulleted list of items that are, is the list that the, yeah. the town engineer who has to sign off on that and the developer agreed to. So okay. it includes it includes the, the final uh, lift of asphalt, it includes all the median work, it includes all seeding and grading, but we don't have to like wait for the grass to grow right. kind of things. It does include the work being completed at Garner Road, and we've yeah. expressed to them over and over that, you know, we were concerned about that not getting started. They have started doing that work now. Yeah. There is work being done there. They they had they had hoped to not go past 30 days, so they they did not want to be going past September 18th themselves. Yeah, but they've not ventured a date past that date. Okay. Okay. Like I'm sure, Mr. Vance. Got the correspondence related to the. Liquidated damages for that. Okay. 
accumulating yeah. and you all got that. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I keep it, I keep it, I keep it quick here, but I don't want to direct this to uh, Attorney Baggett. I want to say I appreciate you really because you came in during a time of, uh, in which we were dealing with a number of things that we didn't know exactly how they were going to come out. One being the EPA concerns with the property where it, uh, uh, with which we didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out, but it turned out well, and uh, your calmness and your professionalism was excellent during that period. Along with uh, the current situation we're dealing with, we hate to help to help to uh, get get us uh, the necessary counsel to get us where we are now to think this process through, which I believe is so important uh, as to where we are in the times we are in this nation and in this world. Uh, so uh, you are, have been a, 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 an example for me of professionalism and um, calmness under fire and uh, one who allowed uh, us to maintain our position as counsel with integrity and uh, you will, you, your services have been appreciated and are appreciated. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Okay, I'll go here, Mr. Singleton. Yes. Uh, um, Mr. Dillinger asked about the Vanderbilt Springs sidewalk, and I have been asking about that off and on for some time. Last I heard, Mr. Johnson hopes that they'll be able to bid it sometime next spring, early summer, because I said, is it going to be built by this time next year, not long ago? And he said he hoped to be completed by the fall of next year, which would be the sidewalk and the curb and gutter on, um, on both sides to help clean up those stormwater issues they've had. So I hope it's on schedule for that. I want to thank y'all for the uh, assistance with the lighting. I saw Mr. Uh, Forrest, I saw Forrest Jones as I was leaving today. He showed me the picture of what caused the problem. Uh, apparently the light didn't strike out there. And the lights went out last night at South Carolina Park where a soccer team was practicing, a uh, baseball team, didn't know that. a softball team, I'm sorry. Huh. And uh, it happened before, but this was a little different. But apparently the light didn't hit the ground out there and one of the cables going up to the uh, interface out there just exploded wow. <laughs> and so uh, uh they got on it today they got duke energy out there they fixed it and repaired and lights are back up and working so Great. i appreciate that i texted in last night because that's it was 7 30 nobody's come out there and look at it then because practice ended today but i just wanted to let them know they sent me right back let me know they sent the forest and they hopped right on so i appreciate that mr baggett I'll, i i agree with everything that's been said thank you for your professionalism and uh your advice as we went on this process, I've learned to read between the lines sometime when you gave us some advice, and I figured out what you were really, what you were, I think you were saying, <laughs> and what you meant, and what your advice was, but you weren't as blunt as to say it. But I figured out a couple times to read between the lines what you were trying to suggest, but you stayed down the middle of the road. So I appreciate your uh, work, and uh, yeah, I know with the, I know you're the lobbyist for the North Carolina Police Chiefs Association, and with COVID, that kind of Extend that. I don't know if you do it virtually or you talk to people. I'm assuming you do. I don't know, but both. You don't have. You don't have to. You weren't. You weren't walking the halls at the uh, legislature this year, so. Uh, and you may not next year. Who knows what may happen? But thank you for your time and your work. We appreciate thank you, it. Sir. Mr. Matthews. Yes, sir. I just wanted to comment. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I was talking about the crossworks. They've been working. They look good out there at the ones on uh, Timber Drive, and they're working out there today in front of the Y and lining had all the cones out and uh, doing big and i'm eagerly anticipating them coming on down the road to uh white deer crossing and uh, i'll give you a good report on that i'll send you pictures so uh the phil the, matthews uh crosswalk the phil matthews crosswalk is my colleague <laughs> <laughs> but uh in regards to our attorney all i say is sir you have been a hoot and i've enjoyed working <laughs> with you <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's all i got to say uh, about that yeah. Okay. Uh, the mayor doesn't have any report other than just to uh, observe and note. I appreciate the uh, the uh, kind comments uh, on in regards to our ex mayor. Um, had a chance to uh, be in touch with uh, uh, his wife uh, during the process, and um, she uh, expresses her appreciation for the town's concern and uh, uh, interest. So. Uh, we will uh, we will uh, move on that a little bit later on, probably, uh, for sure. So with that, uh, Mr. Uh, Town Manager, if you'll give us a site for a closed session, I'm going to declare about a five to ten minutes recess, and we'll readjourn in the uh, closed session room. Uh, going to closed session to consult with the attorney. 
pursuant to GS 143-318.11A1. Okay. Um, somebody want to make that motion uh, in second. regards to this site and a second, okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, and uh, any opposed, no. So I declare that uh, we are now in uh, closed session. Uh, went into closed session to confer uh, with attorney uh, in regards to some litigation and the uh, council uh, approved the recommendation of uh, pending action that um, uh, we will receive a report back on in the future. Um, I believe that covers everything. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn this uh, session of council. So moved. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded uh, here. Yes, okay, by Mr. Matthews. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. I declare us adjourned. Oh, Thank yes. you all.